assalamu alaikum as far as chapter 4 is concerned it's a very easy chapter chapter is uh, software what you need to know in this chapter is the difference between system software and application software uh, then you need to work on be aware of the operating system hota kya hai utility programs kya hota hai application software in mein kya difference hota hai uh, you need to know the functions of an operating system you need to know the need of ha hardware firmware and operating system when running the application software and most importantly, you need to know the role and operation of interrupts. After that, what else you need to know is the uh, programming languages, the translators and IDEs. Very, very important for you people to understand and remember. Let's start with, you know, with the system software. Software is divided into two categories. The first one is your system software. And second one is the application software. As you can see, the hardware is interactive with the system software. And then we can install application software of different types like... Uh, what processors like databases like browser like games games software the game that you play the spreadsheet all these are your applications or application software so you can see the general features of the system software is the set of programs to control and manage the operation of the hardware provides a, a platform on which other software can act or other software can run can work Required to allow hardware and software to run without problems. It provides human computer interface, HCI, and controls the allocation and use of the hardware resources. As far as application software is concerned, it is used to perform certain applications, certain apps, allows the user to perform specific tasks using the computer resources, a simple a single program like Notepad, or it can be a suite of programs like MS Office. And they can execute them as they require. But one thing that you need to remember is the application software is always leading the System software. It cannot be installed the system software is missing. What else you need to know is a little bit of the features of your uh, word processors, your spreadsheet, as you can see, the creating, editing, saving, and manipulating of text, copy and paste of op uh, operation is there, spell checker and thesaurus is there, importing photos and images into uh, the document is possible, and translation into a foreign language. On the contrary, the most important feature of spreadsheet is the formulae. Uh, you can use graphs, and the most important thing is what if calculations. A uh, database, as the name implies, is the, uh, giving you the ability to carry out queries on databases and can uh, help you in adding, deleting, and modifying your data in the stored in the in the different tables. Along with that, controlling in one and measuring software, you have apps, which are shortened as which are the short form of applications. Then photo editing software, the video editing software, and the graphic manipulation software. These all are examples of your application software. Coming to the typical system software, you have compilers, which will be discussed later. The linkers, a linker or link editor is a computer program that takes one or more object files produced by a compiler and combines them into a single program which can be run on a computer. Now, what is an object file and what is a source file? These are the two terms that you need to know. Source file is what you are programming and object file is what the computers understand. So, source file is something that you write and, and the object file is what the computers understand. So in linkers uh, performance, you can see a linker is meant to actually, a link editor is a computer program that takes one or more object files and it, it is going to produce, a, it is going to produce, it is going to combine them and produce a single program for that. Device drivers, as we studied earlier, this, these again are uh, needed to make the devices work and device drivers are automatically installed using the USB, universal serial bus, if you remember. Your ports are going to be the facility to install the device drivers automatically. Most importantly, you need to know the utility of the utility programs, which will be discussed right now. An operating system is going to be giving you the facility of input and output operations. Uh, HCI, human computer interface, it is going to have from the error handling operation, loading, loading and running the programs and managing of security. Uh, that is user accounts are being maintained and uh, the passwords, the users are allowed to enter the passwords uh, and they are allowed to access their own resources as well. Utility software, as you can see, the utility programs, a few utility programs, as I mentioned, and what you need to know is virus checker, as you are already aware of, uh, virus checker or antivirus, defragmentation software. I discussed this thing under the heading of chapter number three, HDD, so you already know. What you need to know is antivirus, what is it doing? It's going to work in the background and make your system uh, away, stay away from the virus attack. 
After that defragmentation, as the name implies, the defragmentation is meant to actually put all the broken, uh, non-contagious parts of the file into one piece so that it can be accessed faster, it can be worked upon faster. That is what, what the, the purpose of defragmentation software is. Then we have the utility program that is meant to perform the backup. So you can see the backup is all, all, already there. So you can put one more application, one more utility program is performing the backup. And uh, backup software is there to, um, you can see while it is sensible to take manual backups, definitely we, are, we can use a memory stick or we can use the external hard drive or we can even in some situations use a tape drive as well. Although not mentioned in your syllabus, but we can use a tape drive as well for backing up. But along with that, we do have the utility program. It is meant to perform the backup automatically for the user and that is done uh, without our knowledge, without us doing anything and the same data can be retrieved in case of any data loss as well. Then we have the screen savers, security system, security software is there that is going to manage access and control in the user accounts. It is uh, going to perform this activity using user IDs and passwords linking to other utility software. We have the, we have the, to protect against, against the network interfaces, for example, the user firewall, using encryption and uh, that is also the feature of the secure that is also one of the features of your security software screen savers as the name implies these are these are your uh, moving images and these images are going to be activated once your screen is inactive for a certain time period so they definitely they were used in the beginning for the crt monitors but then their uh, utility was so important they are still in use and the people are still using them in case they are moving away so they activate the screen saver so that their system is still active then we have the device drivers, as discussed earlier in chapter number two, we have talked about the device drivers. So we know what are device drivers. And all USB device drivers contain a collection of information about devices that is called descriptors. This is one term that you need to know what is descriptor. All USB device, all USB device drivers contain a collection of information about devices. And this information is called the is called descriptor. Then we have, we have operating system. As I talked about earlier, operating system is... Uh, the feature, HCI, Human Computer interface, interface, what you interact with, that can be your uh, GUI or CLI, a very important thing that can come in your paper, multitasking, more than one task being handled at the same time, running the application software, management of user accounts, managing files, uh, then managing the, your peripherals, memory, memory management, interrupt handling, and security management. These all are simple features of your operating system. Now, what you need to know is the HCI, human computer interface, and here the role of CLI and GUI. CLI is what the users type, and definitely it has its own uh, features, like CLI is faster in execution as compared to GUI, but one problem with CLI is you need to remember the commands, and uh, if you, you are not able to remember the commands, you make a mistake, and the, the task will not be done for you. On the contrary, if I say the GUIs are uh, gaining popularity, the people are making use of the systems faster, they are learning faster because of the, of the GUI. And then GUI uses the VIM, the Windows icons, menus, and pointing devices. Then you can see that um, uh, your uh, VIM or Windows are going to um, make your life easy, but they are needing more hardware requirement. They are needing, uh, they are a little, uh, they are little uh, slower in speed as well. They need a little time to understand and execute the commands, but they are making the life of the people very easy and they are user friendly. Advantages and disadvantages of the command line and user inter uh, interface and the graphical user interface is very important. You can see the same. That interaction with the computer system, user is not in restricted to a number of predetermined options. Uh, you can see it is possible to alter computer configuration settings uses a, using a small amount of computer memory. It is going to be more memory efficient. But on the contrary, the user needs to learn a, a number of commands and learning is a little difficult. All commands need to be typed in which takes time. Uh, each command must be typed in using the correct format, spelling, and, and everything. If you make a single mistake of even a space is not given or space is given extra, then that will result in your command not being executed. On the contrary, GUI is uh, more user-friendly, and it is using a pointing device, such as a mouse, to get the task done faster, and you don't have to learn the commands at all. But this type of interface uses up more memory than a CLI. The user is limited to the icons and they cannot do anything on their own and needs an operating system that has windows to operate but uses up considerable memory. So you need to be focused on the CLI and GUI for your own self. 
RAM and ROM management, definitely the different memory that we have in the computer system, they are being managed again by the operating system, the job being sent, the job being received, how the data is being uh, saved, that is all managed by the operating system. Security management, as we have talked about right now, that user IDs and passwords, when the user is logged in, who is, has access to which area, access rights are being given so that the privacy of the data is being uh, maintained. Hardware management, every single thing that is present on the in the computer system as hardware is going to be managed by the operating system, is going to take care of each and everything in the computer system. Then we have file management. And this you need to know that the file management means the file conventions, performing different operations, maintaining the directory structures, ensuring access control mechanism, like giving password, giving uh, access rights to different users. So they are not able to access something that is not in their domain. Uh, and then we have like a memory allocation for a file by reading it from the hard drive or SSD and loading it into the memory differently. And you try to open a file, opening means that the file will be opened from your hard drive or your SSD into the memory. And same goes if you are saving the file again, the data will be saved from the memory to your hard drive or whatever. So this is again managed by the operating system. Then you need to know interrupts, which will be discussed right now. Then you are uh, then you need to multitasking, performing more than one task at the same time. And definitely that is only possible if the resources are allocated properly. Allocation of resources is a very important, is a prime important thing in your in your this thing. Management of user accounts, administrator is the prime a person responsible to see everything happening properly and assigning the different rights to the users, assigning, creating the IDs and the passwords are assigned to the users again by the administrator who is the who is the sole person responsible or maybe the people who are responsible for taking care of the whole system firmware bios rom bios as you as we learned earlier is rep often referred to as firmware so this term you need to know it's defined as a program that provides low level control devices and it's actually the bios program is stored in a special type of rom called eep rom uh, electrically erasable programmable read only memory and the bio settings can be uh, are stored on a CMOS chip, complementary metal oxide semiconductor, and CMOS is powered up all the time via rechargeable battery. And this battery, well, the, this, this is what you need to know. The bio settings will, will be reset if the battery was removed or disconnected for some reason. Once the CMOS is started, it will access, access the same BIOS program from EPROM, but the setting will now be default. Factory settings, which can be changed by the user if they want to. Interrupts. A very important thing that can come in your paper is a signal generated by the device or software and to get the attention of the processor and it is done in two situations, either a problem has occurred or the task is accomplished. So in both scenarios, it is going to raise the interrupt and you can see sometimes, sometimes the hardware interrupt, like maybe some paper jam in the printer or uh, maybe paper stuck in the paper, paper stuck in the printer, or maybe the ink has finished, that will result in your hardware interrupt. Similarly, we do have software interrupt, like for example, if some application is able to uh, not find any files, so it will raise the software interrupt. Or maybe the application has been installed properly, then also it will be raising the software interrupt. Sometimes we do have interrupt priorities because some applications need immediate attention, so they are given a higher priority. And some applications can be deferred that can, are given a low priority. Then you need to know the, the definition of buffer. A buffer is basically a temporary storage area inside devices. And like we had to, we do have the printer buffer and this is needed to make the, uh, to make the, to compensate the speed differences between the devices and the computer system. So again, you need to know what a buffer is in order to understand an answer. ISR, what is it actually? If, if for example, if uh, the, you can see an interrupt is, uh, is received, it is need, needs to be serviced. So what happens is whatever the program is running, that program, has it has to stop temporarily so what happens is that program status is stored in a, in isr interrupt service routine so that it is going to start from the same point when the application is uh can say is uh, uh can say happiness give a calm so definitely has to start from the same point so that will be held in isr so that it is going to start from the same point where it had been interrupted interrupted before the application was uh, uh before the interrupt was received Uh, after that, I will suggest you to uh, perform all these questions, the description, their terminologies should be well understood and well learned by every one of us. Now, next thing that we need to know is the different uh, le levels of languages, which are high level, low level, and machine. 
their advantages or disadvantages, their features should be well understood by everyone. What is the computer, computer program? A list of instructions. We do have high level languages and you can see for yourself, high level language is understood cl closer to human language, which is English. It is understood and uh, read easily by the humans because it is closer. So English language written in a smaller time, debugged at a faster rate and is de de debugged at the development state and it maintains once in use. This is a line that you can see and this line is very simple to comprehend because this line is just a statement that is written to make you understand how the uh, high level languages are being handled like Pascal, like Python. On the contrary, we do have low level languages. Low level languages low, refer to the specific architecture and hardware of a computer system. Low level languages can refer to machine code, the basic binary instruction, instruction that a computer can understand or a single language that needs to be translated into machine code. So you can see low level languages are divided into two categories as, as per your book. They are, they are saying machine code that is the zeros and ones language or it can be assembly code that is they again need, need to be translated. Now you can see for yourself that uh, this zero and one is your binary. And on the contrary, if I say this one, this is your hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is a little easier for humans to comprehend as compared to binary. The advantages and disadvantages, as you can see, high level language, independent of the type of computer being used, does not machine dependent, easy to read, write, and understand quicker to write programs. Programs are easier and quicker to debug, easy to maintain programs once in use. On the contrary, the disadvantages are programs can be larger, programs can take longer time to execute, programs may not be able to make use of special hardware. On the contrary, low level can make use of special hardware, include special machine, machine dependent instructions, can write code that can that could doesn't take up much space in the primary memory, can write code that performs the task very quickly. And on the contrary, the disadvantages are it takes a longer time to write and debug programs written in low level language. Programs are more difficult to understand. They are not user friendly as compared to your high level language. Now, moving further to the translators, one thing that you need to remember is machine language does not need any translator. But when it comes to the uh, the uh, high level or low level languages, we need to remember that we need translators and the translators can be compiler or interpreter for high level language and assembler for low level language. I suggest you that you better go through this uh, table that will make you remember the different uh, the differences between and, and even the similarities. You can see the compiler and interpreter have one thing in common that they both are high level language translators. Same goes for, you can see for yourself, a few things are similar for both compiler and assembler. So this is how you can actually frame a question that comes in the paper that deals with compiler, interpreter, mein kya similarity hai, ya kya differences hai. Same goes for any other two combinations as well. So this is how you can prepare for your papers. Let me very quickly read the tell you that what is a compiler. Translates a high-level language program into machine code. And remember, it's a high-level language program, not high-level language. The word keep, Keyword program is supposed to be mentioned in your in your answer. An exe file is produced, an exec executable file of, mach of machine code is produced. One high level language statement can be translated to several machine code instructions. This is one thing that you need to see is one high level language command that you have written is broken down into a series of in statements. And these instructions are your machine code instructions. Compiled programs are written with, are run without the compiler. They don't need the compiler at all. They can run without them. A compiled program is usually distributed for general use. So normally the general use programs are compiled or assembled. On the contrary, if I talk about interpreters, some same thing for both compiler and interpreter, they both are high level language translators. No exe file is being produced. One high level language for instruction is going to be divided into several machine code instructions. So you can see these are the two similarities between compilers and interpreters, the first one and the third one. Interpreter programs cannot be done without the interpreter. You need to have the interpreter always so that it can work. Uh, and you can understand. And in, interpreter is often used when a program is being developed. So this is um, something important, even for a bigger program, if I'm developing it, I'll go for interpreter and not the compiler. Uh, translates, and uh, now, now last we have assembler, translates a low level language program into machine code. An exe file is being produced, one low level language instruction is statement is equal to one machine code instruction. So this is something different between these two and this one. So one low level language statement is uh, going to be translated into one machine code instruction. So one to one. Assembler programs are used without the assembler. This is the similarity between compiler and interpret and assembler. And then you can see an assembler program can be distributed for general use. So you can see for yourself, these are your similarities between compiler and, and assembler that they both are running without the assembler or without the compiler. They both are meant to be 
uh, use for some application that we are uh, di di distributed for general use. You can refer to this table as well, and that will again give you the same that you have we have talked about right now. Last topic of this chapter is IDE. Very simple one that you need to focus on is IDE integrated development environment. So those of you who have worked on uh, some other program where we need where we have different things, we can see for your set that IDEs are giving you the feature of the code editor, a translator, a run environment with a debugger. It has error diagnosis, it has auto completion, auto correction, and an auto documenter and pretty type of printing. I suggest you that you better actually remember a few important things. Code editor, as the name implies, it's going to be giving you the scenario where you can write down the program, edit it, and without the need to have a separate text editor. Uh, as the ones who have worked on HTML uh, development, they know that we need one notepad for typing and another one for viewing the browser. Translator is available in your IDE, which you can use the same play place at the same place where we have a translator. Here we have a runtime environment with the debugger. You can debug just then and there to find out that what the error is. And we have an error diagnostics and auto correction. Uh, the, you can see for yourself, then if the ones who have worked on Python or Visual Basic can recall auto completion, a very important feature that is giving you the facility of uh, automatically completing a few things that appear on the screen and you can just choose them from there. And that is going to make your life a little easy. Auto documenter and pretty printing, as you can see, most code editors are going to use a color code and that will actually give you a hint that whether you are going right or wrong, because if the color changes, not from the away from the norm, then you can see for yourself there is some problem in your answer. Now you can see for the questions, attempt the questions and uh, do this topic very well. It's a very simple topic. Best of luck to you. Allah Hafiz.